Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. In Marvel's What If, we'll open our minds to multiversal possibilities that honestly look less and less hypothetical in the live action future of the MCU. But I think this is gonna be the perfect roadmap for how we understand the more rule-bending Marvel titles like Loki or WandaVision, while giving us some awesome looking alternate reality stories, different genres, the final MCU performance of Chadwick Boseman. We're really gonna love this series when it comes to Disney Plus, most likely summer 2021. I am gonna break down this new trailer frame by frame for all the visual clues and easter eggs to help us decipher what each of these what if scenarios will be. Let's get started. Space. Time. 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 Reality. It's more than a linear path. It's a prism of endless possibility. All right, we hear the voice of Jeffrey Wright as Uwatu the Watcher, our host and guide throughout this anthology series. Kind of like Rod Serling of the Twilight Zone or the Crypt Keeper, Tales from the Crypt. Watchers are Marvel cosmic beings who oversee and observe the multiverse, Uwatu being the Watcher assigned to our universe. We first met Watchers in the MCU back in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, the tall, bald dudes at Stan Lee bored with his stories. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, at that time, I was a Federal Express man. Now, What If was a series of hypothetical scenario Marvel comics with titles like What If Uncle Ben Hadn't Died? Or What If the Hulk Had the Brain of Bruce Banner? Which, of course, the Endgame filmmaker said inspired Banner in that movie. While these one-off episodes might not be official MCU canon, Uatu himself totally is and absolutely could pop up in a live-action MCU title like Thor Love and Thunder, Doctor Strange of the Multiverse of Madness, or Guardians Volume 3. Here he says the words, Space. Time, reality. Interestingly, the names of three out of six Infinity Stones, those stones being condensed versions of the six core abstract elements behind the universe's creation during the Big Bang. So he leaves out mind, power, and soul, making me wonder if each of these what if episodes will flip on the axes of one of those first three constants. Characters in different spaces, in different chronological times, in different realities. Meanwhile, maybe the upcoming Marvel Disney Plus series will set around the other three themes. Falcon and Winter Soldier about power, WandaVision about the mind stone, Loki about his soul. But then again, Loki is definitely more of a time-centric series, so we'll see. Here, Nick Fury wipes Frost off of Cap's shield. But remember, in the MCU, Fury himself didn't discover Cap frozen in that ice. And we know that the Cap episode of this series is the Captain Britain, Peggy Carter, with a different shield, with the Union Jack. So I suspect this is just from a different episode. More on that later. Star Lord opens the doors of the Morag Temple, but we know from later shots this is not Peter Quill, this is T'Challa. And then a close-up of the Time Stone in the Eye of Agamotto, but again, this might not be around the neck of Stephen Strange. We'll see more of that as we move on. Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all. Now, Fury speaks in a different setting that should look familiar, not unlike the shield grid set up around the Mjolnir crater in Thor, a site that I pointed out in that overhead shot contained the hidden letters of SHIELD, S-H-I-E-L-D. We also see Thor himself from that moment in the thunderstorm as he went to go try to lift Mjolnir, but he failed. And we also get that quick shot of Iron Man eating donuts when he was hung over in Iron Man 2. One of these stories must feature Fury's big week. Remember when Thor and Iron Man 2 and the Incredible Hulk and Cap and the epilogue of Cap all kind of took place in that same week leading up to Loki's attack in Avengers. And yes, Star-Lord T'Challa in the Morag Temple. Behind him, you can see that column with the magnetic field that contained the orb. Now the orb is no longer there, so T'Challa's got it. The Marvel Studios title card shows us Uatu the Watcher peering out from behind it and his perceptive eyes linger as we fade to black. Now later on, we see how the animation on Uatu appears to cast him as a silhouette in space, like his form containing stars and planets. Folks, this is pretty pretty much the way Marvel Comics depicted the cosmic entity Eternity. And I'm not sure if the show is going to draw a connection between the two things, but I am just saying this abstract depiction leaves Marvel room to revisualize Jeffrey Wright in a different form if they ever want to bring him into live action. Next clip. I was promised an army. a super soldier. Okay, here we see the shots of what is confirmed to be the first episode of the series. What if Peggy Carter became Cap? 
The super soldier serum flows into her. Howard Stark moves the shades. Actually, I love how both father and son in this trailer are both in shades. And a thick Peggy comes out of that chamber. And then in full Captain Britain gear, she flips a truck. Looks awesome. And it looks like we're going to see different World War II missions in Europe more tied to the British campaign than the American invasion. Like maybe she'll help liberate France. Maybe we'll see Dunkirk. Originally, Captain Britain in the Marvel comics is Brian Braddock, a multiversal version of Captain America where he's just like from the UK that actually might be brought into live action canon this just looks like a hypothetical scenario of Peggy got the serum next clip cool. you sure don't seem too freaked out about all this kid what you doing out there all by yourself anyway? Exploding the world. Sounds fun. All right, in this section, we see the next episode we know about. What if T'Challa became Star-Lord? The Ravager's ship floats down just as it did in the Guardians of the Galaxy prologue, except now instead of Missouri, it's Wakanda over a young T'Challa with his techie vibranium spear. Remember Peter Quill screamed, but because T'Challa has plenty of familiarity with advanced tech, he says, <sighs> And because T'Challa is totally on board with this, he and Yondu seem to get along great. There's also this shot of Stephen Strange, and the episode I'm most curious about. Because notice his clothes here. He is wearing the tux that he wore during his car accident. His bow tie is there, but it is loosened. There are bruises on his face, presumably from that car accident, though his hands are not shattered. He looks worried here as these symbols float around him. And later we see a form of Doctor Strange with a female character at his feet. I'm thinking this episode episode is going to be, what if Christine Palmer died in Doctor Strange's crash? And now Doctor Strange's reasons for seeking out magic are not to selfishly heal his own hands, but out of guilt for his distracted driving and ego getting Christine killed, he must now embrace sorcery to try to bring his love back from the dead. And obviously, it's not going to go too well. Next clip. But why stop at one world when we can show you all of them? Okay, here, a very cool looking shot of Peggy hitching a ride on an early Iron Man prototype suit designed presumably by Howard Stark. Fittingly, it looks very Mark I Iron Mongery, which an old school industrious like Howard Stark and like Obadiah Stane would have conceived the Iron Man suit to be. We also know from earlier footage that Skinny Steve will ride in this thing, kind of like Bruce Banner in the Hulkbuster suit in Infinity War. Another shot shows Bucky on this subway train. Now we know from the other shots that he is turning to look at a zombie Captain America us another confirmed episode, What If the Avengers Were Zombies, based on the Marvel Zombies comics. Now, I say Avengers here, though it could just be Zombie Cap. In fact, that could be what's going on when Fury wipes the frost off Cap's shield. Maybe he finds his body, but when he unearths that thing, he finds that it has turned into a zombie during this period, maybe left with some kind of Hydra infection. Though I will say, it is interesting that Bucky appears to have the black vibranium arm that he got in Infinity War after his time with Cap in Civil War, after his time in Wakanda. So I'm not really sure what the timeline of this hypothetical reality is. And if you are into streaming horror content, I want to thank our friends at Shudder for sponsoring this video. As the world's premier streaming service for horror, thriller, and supernatural content, Shudder is spooky 24-7, 365. Just because Halloween has come and gone doesn't mean the scares don't continue. Sign up for Shudder and get access to the largest collection of acclaimed horror movies and series streamed right to your favorite devices. Unlimited access to the largest, fastest it's growing human curated selection of thrilling and dangerous entertainment with no ads for just $5.99 a month. New shockers and thrillers get added every week and Shudder works on your smart TV, your Xbox One, Apple TV, any other device. They've got exclusive titles that you won't find anywhere else like Scare Me starring the boys Aya Cash and SNL's Chris Red. I really like their documentary films and TV series. We use their great series Cursed Films for background research when we were doing horror content this Halloween. I'm really excited to watch the doc Leap of Faith, William Friedkin on The Exorcist. The Exorcist is a movie where the story behind the story is really just as scary as the story itself. So get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated selection includes titles like the acclaimed Tigers Are Not Afraid, one Cut of the Dead, Revenge and the Creep Show TV series, produced by Greg Nicotero and based on the famous films of George Romero. To try Shudder free for 30 days, go to Shudder.com and use the promo code ROCKSTARS. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com and use the promo code ROCKSTARS for a free 30-day trial. Oh, and another interesting horror shot. 
There is this look of Stephen Strange with his shadow taking a menacing form behind him. This could be how his shadow Bizarro self splits away from him and how they end up in a fight. I shouldn't have referenced Bizarro. That's a DC thing. I'm sorry. But next, another intriguing shot. Loki arriving at the UN. Actually, that might be T'Challa and T'Chaka in the front row there. Loki, notice, is flanked by the Asgardian Royal Guard. Whoa. So are we looking at a what if Loki won in Avengers or what if Loki became worthy of Mjolnir? Near? Maybe, kinda. I actually think we're gonna see a bit of what if Loki won in the Loki series, but I actually think this is a fifth episode. What if Thor failed, making Loki king of Asgard? So notice how, along with the Thor shots, we get this close up of Hawkeye when he aims the arrow down at Thor in that moment. Remember, in the movie, Hawkeye decided last second to refuse to take the shot. I guess he just decided he liked Thor. But what if Haki let that arrow fly and it struck Thor? Because notice in this shot of Nick Fury with the guns pointed upward at something else shows Hawkeye's arrow stuck in something, suggesting that Hawkeye definitely released that arrow. And uh, think about it, he never misses. So that could lead to Fury now looking up and saying, hmm, that's ominous. And that ominous thing could be Loki and his forces successful arriving to Midgard to carry out his plan. Because think about it, now Thor never would have gotten to prove himself worthy. Loki would be unopposed in his ascent to the throne of Asgard. And now he would carry out his plan to invade Midgard and extend his rule over the Earth's governing body, in this case the UN, though presumably Loki would then be opposed by Wakanda and the Black Panther, which would be a dope battle. But then a shot of this heavenly looking library. There's a pink blossom tree. It kind of reminds me of the tree in the Kamartaj courtyard. Maybe these books are a part of a vast sorcerer library, though it could also be the Yggdrasil World Tree of Asgard, which was also in the center of an Asgardian vault of knowledge. The orbital spiral pattern on the floor in front of it does remind me of the various depictions of the way Idrisil connects to the Nine Realms. Now, it is a bit hard to make out who is entering the space. They got a scepter, a bandage on the middle finger, big shield on the back, either bald or has a cap-like helmet. But still, I am assuming this is connected to the Doctor Strange episode because we later see who I assume to be Doctor Strange in this setting, floating all the library books around himself. And then with a very Eternity-looking Uatu, we move on. I am your guide through these vast new realities. Follow me and dare to face the unknown. All right, Peggy mounts the Iron Man Mark I armor as they take off, and Sparks also fly between Peggy and Skinny Steve. And then a shot of the Milano soaring into nowhere. You can see that purple roofed building that is the Collector's Vault. We also see the Collector himself, Tanelier Tavan. But yeah, now leading this will be T'Challa, which does make me wonder if they are going to keep that ego lineage, or if T'Challa was just abducted randomly. And if T'Challa was not in Wakanda for the events of Black Panther, does that set the stage for Kill? monger to return to Wakanda unopposed and take over Wakanda. And then back to this shot of Iron Man with the donuts, since this would have been set during Fury's big week, this could be shortly after Thor's presumed failure and Loki's presumed arrival and victory, which would also place Fury's defrosting of Cap part of that Loki episode as well. And then we get a shot of Captain Marvel, which could be from just a sixth episode premise that I'm less sure about, or I'm thinking it could be the zombies episode. Maybe Carol Danvers is another Avenger who might have to join Bucky in clearing out all these super zombies. Then Captain Peggy leads the Howling Commandos. She replaces Cap in that iconic shot from the first Avenger. And then this epic shot of Strange. It looks like the darker version of Strange. There are these gray bags around his eyes right before he releases the dark energy. Perhaps in order to save his love from the afterlife, Strange must battle a dark doppelganger of himself. And then after the what if title, we move on to the final clip. Give me the tour. So Star-Lord T'Challa talks to, that is Howard the Duck there. So that places him in the Collector's Vault where we know Howard the Duck was. You can also see all the other tanks behind him. Now, T'Challa is wearing the Black Panther vibranium necklace, confirming that he either had it with him when he was abducted as a kid, or he might've fashioned his own just using similar tech. I do love the way he says, Give me the tour. In the same cadence that Chadwick Boseman said, Get this man a shield. And then we end in this crazy fight between Strange and his darker doppelganger. Now there is a lot going on here. There 
there is a bridge behind him that looks like one of the Manhattan bridges. This could be set in a version of Manhattan or maybe an underworld reflection of Manhattan. And then when that doppelganger grabs Strange, breaking through his spell, his hand is a monstrous green claw that it was not before. So are we looking at a scroll? Are we looking at a shape-shifting demon? Are we looking at the entity Nightmare? Let me know which of these what-if scenarios you are most excited to see. Again, we are only seeing footage from what looks like five to six episodes here. It is expected to be a 10 episode season. Based on the cast, we're also likely to get an Ant-Man episode, maybe another that follows the Ragnarok characters. In the What If comics, there's also a Thanos joining the Avengers What If story that I would love to see. I did a video about that last year. Now, if you have not already, be sure to check out all my other in-depth breakdowns and reactions to the other big trailers that came out of Disney's Investor Day. It's like we have stuff to talk about again. Isn't that nice? 2020 has been a difficult year of theory spinning. Thanks for your patience. I've really just been trying to keep you entertained day to day. It really has not been easy. But one way you can help support this channel is by checking out all of our great merch options that we've been releasing. NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars on socials. Thank you for watching. Boom! Boom! You looking for this? <laughs>